Welcome back Integrity Fam to another Academy session on SQL injection vulnerabilities. And today we're going to have a look at union attacks. And let's immediately jump into the lab provided by Portswigger. We're seeing a web shop. There is a my account section. There is multiple categories where you can refine your search and you can read about the products. And if we go to accessories, we do see in our URL bar that we're having a parameter called category added and we're setting it to accessories. And if we look at the SQL syntax, we do see that we select asterisks, which means everything from the table products where the category is set to accessories and released is set to one. So what happens right now if we say accessories followed by a single quote? We're getting an internal server error. And the reason here for is that if you look at the syntax again, we're having two single quotes after accessories. That is not correct syntax. And this is why we're getting an error. Okay, now let's look into union, which is where it gets a little more interesting. Now we say, okay, we want to close our category called accessories and we're union selecting. That means from a different table. Um, right now, we're just selecting null and we're getting an internal error. We can use the null string to realize or to experience how many columns are used by that initial, initial SQL query. And if we go to null, comma, null, we do see that now we're getting a successful response, not an error anymore. So we do realize that the original SQL query was returning two columns. It's the title and the text of the product description. So now we know the original table has two columns that we're getting returned. If we want to get two columns out of another table, we also have to go for two values. And if we say, for example, one null, we can try if the type of that column is a number. That didn't work, so we know it's not a number. What if we say test? We do see, okay, that works. So the first column that is, that is returned is a string, and we do see in our results that we're getting the string test back. So now in our second column, let's try if this is also a string. Let's say test and test two. And yes, this works. This is not giving us an error. So we are seeing test and test two in our response by the application. So now that we know that the two columns are strings, we can try to get something that is really interesting. And we know in this lab that there is a column called username and another one called password that is sitting in the users table. So we can say union select username and password from the table users dash dash, which, me which means everything behind in the original SQL query is not relevant anymore. It's and commented out. And if we do that, we finally see that we're getting some really juicy and interesting data with the administrator, user and password, colleges, and wieners. And as the lab is challenging us to log in as the administrator, we're going to copy the administrator's password. We're going to the my account link. We're going to log in with the username called administrator. And now we can use his password. And if we do that, we do see that we have successfully solved the lab. And this is awesome. And let's take a moment to reiterate what we were doing. So first of all, we were seeing a SQL query that was used to return data. In our case, it was just product data. We played around and tinkered around a little bit with it by using a single quote and realized, oh, the application is throwing an error. And that is usually a good indicator that it is vulnerable to SQL injection. Then we used a union select query to query for null strings, which basically represent every single possible character type um, that is used by a, a table. And we started with one null string that didn't work. So we realized, okay, the original SQL query is returning more than just one column. 
we added another one, we said null, null, we realized, okay, now it is working. So we had the correct numbers of columns that are returned by the original SQL query. And this is important because otherwise the union um, attack payload is not going to work out. And then we substituted our null payloads with a number and a string just to realize what character type the original column has, if it's a if it's an integer, if it's a string or something else. And now that we knew that, we went ahead and we were asking for username and password out of a different table, table called users, because in this lab, we knew that it actually existed. In a real life application, you would have to do some guesswork in order to find out if that table exists or not. And then we got the juicy information out of the database. And this is it. This is a way how you can extract interesting data from a SQL database. And yeah, leave us some questions or comments down below. And as usual, give this video a like and subscribe in the top right corner. And I will talk to you again pretty soon.